Hello, everybody. I'm Elena. I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Sandbird, and I'm just so happy to be here tonight because we are celebrating Sandbird's 10th anniversary in the best possible company. You know, at Sandbird, we are a platform that is there for um, scent discovery and scent exploration, and where would we be without our amazing founder-led brands. It's an honor to work with you guys from, you know, members of the press, the influencer community. We're all part of doing this fragrance thing and uh, we couldn't wish for better partners. Today is also, I think it's a very special occasion in uh, the, the podcast Scent World that we've been doing since the beginning of past year. We're going to do it a little bit differently today. One of my favorite quotes is uh, from an Italian philosopher, Umberto Eco, who said, books speak about themselves. And I, you know, being in the fragrance world, I frequently think of fragrances that are all out there speaking and having a conversation among themselves. And today, by bringing, bringing the founders here, we're going to have you know, the parents of those fragrances. With all of that, I am so excited to bring Brittany out here. Brittany is a person I talk with every day, I work with every day, just an absolute MVP on my team, um, amazing podcast host, and so much more. Please give it up for Brittany, our podcast host today. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our first ever Scent World Live. We are so excited to be here and talk about all things fragrance with some of our favorite brand founders ever. Um, it's it's going to be a really exciting conversation. We're going to have lots of fun. Um, so a bit about today. We are having our 10-year anniversary. Scentbird has been around for 10 years. We're teenagers. It's something to, to be really proud of. We absolutely love sharing scent with everyone, with the world, with our audience, and hopefully reaching new audiences as well. All right, we have eight wonderful founders that we are going to be speaking with today. So I'd like to welcome our first panel of guests. We have, woo, <laughs> we have David Maltz, Malega Jones, Vicka Narslanian, and Fabrice Croisset. Let's give them a round of applause. So, welcome everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm so happy to be talking to you all today. Thank you for joining us. We are live from Nue House here in New York City, Madison. So, if we can start, I mean, as a scent birdie, I know all of your names, I know all about your brand, but for our audience, if you could introduce yourself and tell us about your brand. Let's start with you, Fabrice. Okay. Can you hear me? Is that good? Yes. All right. So my name is Fabrice Croiset. I'm the founder of Sense of Wood. And I always uh, describe my brand in three sentences. And I say um, that we are a love letter to trees and forests, that we age our alcohol in wooden barrels, and that we work with some of the greatest perfumers in the world. That's it. I love it. My name is Vikan Arslanian. I call myself the re-founder of Commodity Fragrances. Uh, Commodity Fragrances is a modern American perfumery brand. It was actually born in 2013 on a Kickstarter campaign. So really it's one of the first digitally born, tried home um, fragrance wardrobe brands. Um, and I, I acquired it about four years ago. And that's why I call myself the re-founder. I love that. The re-founder. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Malika Jones. I'm the CEO and founder of Brown Girl Jane, and we are a fine fragrance brand that really utilizes the power of scent to shift emotion and tell stories of global culture. I love it. <laughs> fragrance and well-being. Uh, I'm David Seth Moltz, the founder of DS and Durga. I am the DS of DS and Durga, <laughs> and uh, I believe that fragrance is an art form that's equal to painting, literature, poetry, and music. And I feel like you don't really get to hear that because you don't hear from the perfumers. But I really am a perfumer and I make everything and every drop of what we do. So it's really, uh, you know, there's no middleman. If, if we have an idea, you're just hearing it directly from my wife and I. And uh, everything is made here in New York. Love it. Fragrance brand in New York. Awesome. So I have a few questions that come from some some things from the Scentbird team that we want to know and from customers. So let me start here. Um, David, 
You have an incredible talent for recreating notes that you find out in the world. Um, is there one scent that you wish you could capture that you haven't done yet? Um, I mean, I'm working on like a hundred things at the moment and there's things that are not, I'm working on this thing that like, we came out with a scent that smells like rainbow, like in the distance, if you see the rainbow, like what it smells like. And I worked on it for a long time. I'm trying to do one that smells like the inside of a star. Like what would it be like if you were inside of a star? You know, it's going to be like a little tiny burnt, but also very yellow and glassy. And, and so that one is still pretty gross right now. <laughs> Still pretty it'll gross. get there. <laughs> Fragrances are like butterflies. They start somewhere and they grow into yeah. something that's beautiful to bring out into the world. That's a quote. Um, I'm copywriting <laughs> it as I'm, as I'm saying it. Fabrice, nature is such a huge part of your brand. You talked about capturing the experience of woods and nature in your fragrances. Could you tell us about your well-being rituals and how fragrance is a part of your everyday life? Um, in terms of well-being rituals, I, I, I just live in nature. I live very close to nature. I live in the middle of the mountains in, in the forest. So I, just stepping outside of my house is a well-being ritual, really. Um, uh, and I feel, my, I feel very lucky that I'm so far away from, from any urban environment, uh, particularly since um, creating a fragrance brand and growing a fragrance brand and working with partners such as you, as you guys really requires being in cities all the time. And <laughs> so I've, I've managed to extract myself from that and that's my just, just looking at nature around me. So this is my ritual. And then I spend a lot of time on the mountain because, I, because of all the activities that I do. And uh, so there's that. In terms of uh, fragrance ritual, I just spray everyone and everything all the time. You know, just, uh, I, I spray lampshades and I spray carpets and I spray uh, windows and I spray doors and I spray my furniture and I spray my books and I spray my kids and I spray my dog and I spray everything. And then I smell and I follow them and I just like, and then sometimes I forget that I sprayed this book with that scent and then I open it and it comes back at me. And so I have a very messy ritual and permanent ritual, but it's, it makes my life um, enchanted because it's smelling all the time. You know? I love that. So very much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Malika, do you have any particular rituals around fragrance personally? Um, I think layering throughout the day. So I never end up with the same fragrance that I start with because um, I just am constantly spraying something depending on what I need in that moment. So it's like if I need a little more calm, I'll go towards this. Or if I need to feel, you know, a little more energetic. Um, so there's always lots of things you know, going on at once throughout the day. I love that. I think fragrance is so personal and I, I truly resonate with using fragrance to create a different mood or evoke a different emotion, whether it's bringing something out of you or, uh, you know, uh, creating just this calming feeling. I sprayed on fragrance before this today because there's a lot going on in the world today and it just gives me a sense of calm, whatever the note is. So um, thank you for sharing your stories. Um, I have one last question uh, for you before we play a really fun game. Um, but Vicken, you've had an amazing career in fragrance and building brands. Um, when you started to refound commodity, is there a scent that kind of represents uh, the reemergence of this brand in your journey in reemerging or recreating this brand? Uh, well, thanks for the compliment, first of all. So I have a different relationship with fragrance, actually. So I don't wear a lot of fragrance during the day or often, but when I do, it's like I, I, I shower in it, essentially. So it's really a, you know, a zero or ten kind of a thing for me. Um, so when I, you know, I, when I bought Commodity and acquired it, uh, there was one fragrance, which is called Velvet, and I, and I was driving, and there was a couple of bottles on my car seat and I was like what did I what did I just buy like what is this brand because I hadn't really smelled everything you know you're, you're in the middle of of this transaction and I'm like let me smell these things and as I'm driving I spray velvet on and I literally s swerved down you know going down this hill I'm like holy this is amazing and bleep. so yeah bleep um and so I just you know I love that fragrance it's it's a big you know it's a very big rose almond roasted almond it's really you know an interesting bold fragrance and I was really happy about it actually that smelling what I bought after the fact in fact um, so for me that, that a little bit you, you <laughs> bought a company and didn't smell this stuff before that's crazy bingo yes really? like, yes what? because I love the concept of it. it so we were we were we, we represent about 20 brands in America and so I had always seen this brand in the corner of my eye like I'll be in a store and I'm like what's going on over there like what are these guys doing and so you know when you're let's say you're in a city and you're you're walking by a particular street and you know you want to buy it. You'd love to live in that building if an apartment ever came 
came up, right? Right, right? You don't have to see the apartment. You're like, if that comes up, I'm, I'm going in on, you know, in that building. And it was like that. I was like, I'm definitely buying it. And I was like, what did I just buy? So velvet is the fragrance. Velvet is the fragrance. I love that. Yep. Thank you guys for sharing. I know they were potentially random, but thought provoking questions for you. So on that same wavelength, we're going to play a game called Scented Secrets. So each fragrance founder we have today is going to write a secret or a taboo inspiration for one of their fragrances on a slip of paper, okay? Then we're gonna put them into a bowl and you're going to take turns drawing a slip and then guess which founder the secret belongs to. I mean, how, how, can, how far taboo do you wanna go? I mean, as a <laughs> you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, however deep you wanna go is up to you, okay. but we will be saying them out loud. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited to read these. What are we doing with them? All right, we're gonna collect them. Oh. I am going to put them in a jar. This beautiful jar. <laughs> okay, does anyone want to start? David, how about you? Oh, like I pick so one. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna draw. Like, you're, you're gonna draw from if here. I pick my own. Oh, sorry. If you get your own, um. Back we're gonna know. Okay. Yeah, right. we'll start over. They should pick, maybe. Then you'll see. I mean, they should guess. Oh yeah, we could have the audience guess too. Yeah, grab one. Okay. Here, I can take the jar too if you pass that to me. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me mix them up. Okay. I was gonna write a uh, crustacean, crustacean. <laughs> right. But I didn't do that. Is that yours? No. Perfect. Okay, please read it aloud. So, oh, <laughs> my obsession with Soka inspired our latest perfume, so Brown Girl Game. I love it. What what scent is it? Since we all know it's Malia. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yes, it's, me. Um, it's it's our latest uh, launch, Carnival. So I'm, and it's only a secret because it's it's a crazy obsession. Like it's all I listen to, and it's all the time. So you and live your life in I, Soka music, basically. Do you have a favorite Soka song for those of us who do not know what Soka oh. is? And could uh, you sing it? <laughs> exactly. So it go no. Um, <laughs> I would say Kess, um, hello. That's a good starter. Okay, we are gonna build a playlist. Hey, yes. I yes. see people in the audience dancing, thinking yeah. of the song yes. in their brain. So, you know, There's that's a, a good one. There's a soca band back there. There's a soca exactly. band back here for the audience. I'm going. Did you get your own? Well, now it's like a 33.3% uh, I mean, chance he's going to get it. I love that you what knew that number off the top of your head. <laughs> so this just says skunk and elk. Who do you think has a fragrance inspiration of skunk and elk? I mean, they're both unusually weird enough to be, <laughs> to be, qualified, to be qualified for this, but I'm going... Nathan. What'd you say? That means not, not, no. Uh, no. <laughs> so my kid says Nathan for now. No. I was like, who is Nathan? No, Nathan, like Nathan, nothing. Not Nathan. me. Not me. Not you. I'm going to use that now. Well, oh, who could tell. it be? Who could it be? Yeah. It's not mine. It's her again. <laughs> she does Soka and Soka Skunk. Soka and Skunk. Soka right, and me. Skunk. <laughs> it's me. It's, um, it's just two super interesting smell. Every time, I, every time there's a skunk that does the skunk thing, and then I'm, I'm driving, I'm walking through it, and I smell that thing. And then I smell it, and then I smell it because it never dies. It's just like, it's so strong, and it's so rich, and it's so layered, and I'm like, this is awesome. We should, crazy. yeah. I agree with him. Yeah. And we, and we always, always speak about indolic notes, and we speak about, I just, I just, there's something to be done with the skunk. It's rubbery. The, it's very rubbery. No, we're well, not yet. Oh, not, not yet. yet, okay. not <laughs> yet. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to do a headspace of a running skunk, but I think we, you know, I would love to, uh, I would love to try to. If you take the rubbery stuff of gardenia, that's the way to go. That's uh, like, maybe. you know, skunk's so rubbery. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Can, do you or like, like Lily of the Valley? Malika, do you like? I'm, I'm loving the stories behind the love of skunk. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a skunk lover, <laughs> but I do love the stories. Away. <laughs> I love this. I, I love. I love the is stories. A completely different. It's a different. It's a different. It's it's a herd of elk. Um, there's a where I live. The there's, like, there's a lot of elk, and uh, the and it, they smell. Um, they smell. They have as big as horses. That those, the males have those huge, beautiful, dramatic antlers. Um, they run super fast. They run like this. <laughs> they run around the trees like this because their antlers are, are shaped in that, in that direction like that. And so uh, you heard it here first. What is this? Three out of four fragrance founders, skunk. 
love the smell of skunk, and no, that's what we're going to get. Not love, not <laughs> love. <laughs> I'm, dry, I'm, I'm doing a hot take. Interesting. <laughs> but there's a, there's interest for three out of four fragrance founders. You know how they do the dental commercial? Anything strong. That's three out of four dentists recommend. <laughs> three out of four fragrance founders recommend smelling skunk. And as far as I know, it hasn't been done yet. I mean, no one has, a, has there's no extract of, sk of skunk. You should try that. Though. It's a challenge. <laughs> Game on. Okay, Malika, have you, have you picked one? No. no. Let's see. Secret inspo, smell of welding metal. Who do you think likes the smell of welding metal? Nathan. Really? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Do tell. <laughs> um, our latest fragrance, <laughs> Milk, actually, was inspired by kind of the two, th two things, which were um, kind of roasted marshmallows in a, in a fireplace. And we were trying to go with this hot, cold mm. thing. Um, I happen to love welding. And welding, as hot as it is, has a very cold kind of feeling, kind of a cold smell. And so it was amazing how the perfumer was able to capture a, a coolness of, of welding, so. That's really cool. Nice. What, David, in your mind, can you think of some notes that would capture the essence of, welding? of cooling or welding? Well, cooling, you can use like, you know, anything, the mint stuff, like mm -hmm. peppermint or menthol or stuff. But for metallic things specifically, you know, there's irony stuff in patchouli. There's, you know, aldehydes that get very metallic, but you want to use the grosser smelling ones, you know, like the Supra. That one has like a very sharp, but then there's a lot of orange in that stuff and it can get too orangey and welding seems a little more silvery. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, well, and if you go. Aldehyde? I just provide you know, the inspiration. I have no idea how to make it. If you go for the, <laughs> you know, there's woody amber molecules like, like trisamber that are really intensely metallic, like dentist office -y. That, that that can get you there too. I see a collab coming, huh. you guys. Is anyone else feeling a collab Welding coming? Skunks. Welding yeah. skunk. Welding skunk. Elk. This is getting pretty. And then we need a trending nasty. note. Vanilla. Okay, that's it. <laughs> but make it gourmand. But make it gourmand. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read the last one. A trashy New York City nightclub. We only have one more person hmm. left. <laughs> Who could that be? Yathan. Explain. <laughs> that, that's our newest one called Black Magenta. That's like a, a night out in New York, like a little trashy, little classy. It's like really intense pink pineapple. It's actually chosen by someone in the audience. Because I'm always sh making a million things and show it to people. And she was like, there's something to this. And I was like, huh, is there? And then I showed it to people and they loved it. And, um, you know, it's out of my comfort zone of sweetness. It's like really, really sweet in the beginning, but it then has tobacco and amber and sort of like I Irish twilight as well and orange Ooh. blossom, yeah. And what's the trashy part? Uh, just, it smells like a little, like, you know, that sweet pineapple-y is kind of like a, you know, not the most taste. It's, it's like it's like bottle taste, service. Bad taste. Yeah, <laughs> it's bottle yeah. service. Well, the I just pineapple like, that comes with the bottle service. I, you know, it's 2024. Like we're really you know taking pineapple about. perfumes seriously. You know, like that. It's <laughs> like, but I'm I'm part of it. Like it is what it is. But I'm just saying, people want like sweet things. You know, and I just never. I was not into doing that before, but now I've, you know, gotten into it more. But pineapple was not like a note that I was taking so seriously. 10 years ago. And here we are. New York City nightclub fragrance. Yeah. I definitely smell, will it, smell that. It has like the ethyl praline, you know, stuff that's like really soft sugary kind of thing too. So yeah. exciting. Okay. We have time for a few audience questions. So does anyone in the audience have a question for the panel or a particular person? And if not, I will have to seat one. <laughs> oh, we've got a hand. A mic is coming for you. I would like to know if anyone has anything new coming out soon that you can preview, like a little preview of something that's coming that you're working on. You already did with the stars and the... I, that's not, I mean, that's nowhere okay. near. It's still terrible. <laughs> it's not ready yet. Yeah. Okay. Anything that we can expect new from thing? anyone. Oh, I have one that's as interesting, though. This is, and then I can talk about yes. it. This is cool. Okay. So I'm going to try to make this short. There is a nonprofit that is using soft touch robotics from the Harvard lab to figure out how sperm whales can talk to each other in Dominica. And so this guy goes down there and, and gets in the water with the whales and they use robotics and they've figured out uh, this language that sperm whales are saying to each other. And the first thing that they've been able to decode, and by the way, this is the first time anyone's ever decoded a language of another species besides us. They know for sure that they do this certain click pattern and it means let's dive because they say it and then they all go dive down. 
So we're making a perfume for them that's called Let's Dive that smells like being in the water with the whales going down, kind of like a meditation on ambergris. You have like real seaweed extract in it. And it's the walrus tooth thing we were talking about. Yeah. You know, it's it has like some stinky ocean to it, but it smells quite realistic of like getting down in the water with whales. And it's called Let's Dive. I love that. Cool. Who can follow that? I, I know. It's, <laughs> that one's a little weird. Like robotics. Like, I'm making a cologne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Malika, any exciting new fragrances that you're willing to divulge with us? Yes, yes. We're about to launch Carnival, which was inspired by Caribbean Carnival. And the challenge for us was really making, to your point, like a juice juicy, sweeter fragrance, but still having some sophistication to it and, and making it feel very complex and nuanced. And so there's like juicy mango, but also golden pimento and, and amber and, and vanilla. And it's a really creamy, lovely um, take on a fruity floral that's not, you know, pedestrian or too juvenile. Right. I'm so excited to smell both of those. I will be stocking you both for samples as soon as they're for available. Sure. We have time for one more audience question. I see one person here. A mic is coming your way. We want you to be heard. Um, I was just going to ask uh, Malika, when is the Carnival uh, fragrance actually coming out? Oh, we're launching um, exclusively with Sephora, and that will be um, on the 21st of March. I love it. Yeah. Fragrance Month. That's Fragrance Day, March 21st, yes, right? Yes, it's National Fragrance Day. Love it. Represent. Represent National Fragrance Day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, either of you have launches you, you want to share, want to talk to us about? Can I speak about the collaboration that we've done together? Yeah, okay, please so do. We have two fragrances coming out that uh, are both the, uh, the uh, outcome of collaboration between Sandbird and Sense of Wood. Nice. And what we did is I interviewed a number of your clients about their personal forest, so the trees that they love and the, 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 the forest that they love and that have made them who they are. And then we... Um, we gathered all that information and we turned it into a brief for Mackenzie Riley, the perfumer, uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the specific ask that she should use ingredients that have a, ne a neural benefit. And then, I'll just make it short, but we went through an entire fragrance development and we ended up with two fragrances that are respectively called Calm in Cedar and Strength in Centaur um, that have those exact benefits that are said by the name coming from those exact um, woody notes that are in the name as well. And um, they're spectacular. I yes, so excited. So, yeah. We're so excited to see those come to launch. Yay, clapping. Okay. <laughs> so I am going to close this out today. I have one last question for each of the founders. Um, I'm going to field it to you first, Vicken. So I'm listening. You're all ears. <laughs> so my question to you is, what is something that you're really excited to see change in the fragrance industry? That's a great question. I think uh, I think we're already seeing it. It's the it's the appreciation for the talent behind uh, the product. Um, I think we're also seeing an acceptance of experimenting with a you know huge um, spectrum of scents or 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 scent profiles. Uh, I think we have a long way to go and I think it's super exciting to see that. Both the maker and the and and what they're making. Yes, I love it. How about you, Malika? Um, I think scent has such a power to tell stories and so I'm excited that the storytellers are becoming more diverse, more inclusive and more reflective um, and that we're able to showcase, you know, culture and talk about where these ingredients are from and the people behind them and and those sorts of things so just expanding what fragrance has looked like and who's behind fragrance is really exciting to me absolutely me too i'm so excited to see that how about for you david uh so i think mine echoes a little bit what what you're saying that uh I, I ask people all the time you know many people can name a uh, a painter a chef uh, a musician a filmmaker uh, you know, sculptor and like almost no one, and even people in the industry cannot name a perfume perfumer sometimes. And I think that's bonkers, right? Like you actually do not hear from the person who made the actual formula, you know, like it, it, it's crazy to me. So the more we hear from a perfumer talking like in layman's terms, I hope, you know, that I can, I can do that to like talk to people just like, you know, it's, it, I, I hope we'll be able to understand the power of the art form more, you know, the way, the way, so not, it's not going to become like, how cuisine is, but you know, like 
no one knew who Alan, well, not no one, but you know, sh the whole chef thing happened yeah. and all those shows. And now like my dad knows who like Alan Ducasse is, you know? So right. that, that stuff, <laughs> I, I think that it could go that way a little bit. I'm actually working on a TV show that, uh, where I make a perfume for someone and you get to like see more of, more of the process. And so I hope that it's going to screen around April 18th. Ooh, I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're claiming it. April, yeah. 18th. April 18th. So exciting. You know, I, I will just <laughs> call Perfume Quest. I, I will add to say that I think we're doing a good job representing perfumers, though, in the sense that if this was, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, when you're, you know, you're interviewing the founders of other fragrance houses that are, you know, Calvin Klein, whatever, they would be talking about who it's for and the marketing behind it. And none of us here spoke about any of those things. We all spoke right. about ingredients and how we're making it and, and, and those kind of things. So I, you know, I feel good that we're all at least good ambassadors to yes. the to the perfumers behind it, and and I agree that they should continue to come come out and be in the forefront for sure. Absolutely. How about for you, Fabrice? Something you're excited uh, that's changing in the world of fragrance? I'm just I, first of all I agree with what you're saying about the about making the perfumers more um, front and center, but I think. For me, I, I just I just hope for more collaboration. You know, just I was just talking about the collaboration that, that was uh, the one between us, but I think there's space for way more than this. I think brands should collaborate well on uh, common fragrances and collaboration between distribution and and and, uh, and and brands and collaboration with customers and and, and with content creators. And I think um, instead of just like like staying staying compat compartmentalized in our in our um, own storytelling, we should merge them. And I'm hoping this happens more. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. You guys are some of our favorite brands on Scentbird, and we cannot wait for all of your new launches and to keep sharing uh, your wonderful fragrances with our audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay.